Stole rats. Hey, Timmy. Thanks for your recommendation. I now have myself a Sky Cowboy flight helmet. Can't wait to get out there and try it out. All right guys, so I started the uh, shrinking process. Everything's glued all the way around. So the bottom's got the first uh, about 225, 250 heat shrink. Once it's, I did the first shrink on, go back, find any spots that need any additional attention, and then uh, do another warmer shrink, work my way up. Uh, once it's totally all shrunk at 350, that's when I'll put the poly brush on. Uh, probably will be a while. We're heading out for a quick vacation. A little skiing, even though there's no, not a lot of snow. We're gonna go take kids out, get some skiing in this uh, coming week. Uh, additionally, some people have asked about some additional pictures of this doubler I put on. Again, just a piece of angle over the top of the original plate. There's not really a whole lot more I can say about it. Uh, you can take a good look at it there. Again, plug welded. But uh, yeah, there's nothing real tricky about that. Some people have suggested doing, you know, from uh, closing out this end here, but this isn't metal on the other side. So I'm not quite sure how you would close that out to wood. Um, I think this is plenty strong, a lot stronger than it was before. And again, there's gonna be a point of failure somewhere if you overload the stresses on it. So do you want that to be this bracket or do you want it to be your whole frame? So keep that in mind when you're beefing that up. Um, the other question was, did I beef up the front mounting spot, which is right here under the fabric? No, it's it's pretty solid. It, so anyway, I'm gonna get back to the shrinking. I got time lapse running, so uh, uh, I'll be more on that process. Here we go. All right, getting back at the project here. We had a little family trip we took and uh, took a little break from the build. Uh, now I'm trying to jump back in, finding out where I should I should start again. So where I finished off is I did the first heat shrink on the fabric. So I'll probably go over and do one more temperature level step up and uh, shrink it again. The goal today is to get the um, heat shrink done, the tail fabric on, and then the first coat of poly brush. I want to address some of the comments that you guys made on the last video. Thanks for the viewership. And guys, we're getting really close to 10,000 subscribers, so hit that subscribe button and help me push over. I'd be really excited to have that happen. Um, so some of the comments that I wanted to address. Uh, first one is the most prevalent comment was, put a stop on the servo so that it can't go over center. Absolutely. Um, if I don't mention things, sometimes it's not because I'm not thinking about doing them, it's just I haven't got to that point. Um, these particular servos, especially the pitch one, if it can't over center forward because the push pull tube will contact the servo bolt, it can over center going back, which would be full up, which is probably where you're going to hit your limit more, more often than not. Uh, you'd rarely would ever go full forward but you will i will probably most definitely go full back so you need to limit that servo arm so it can't over center that direction now the garmin servos i noticed that the pitch servo actually comes with a cage that goes over it and the kit fox bracket is actually pre-drilled for that cage to to go in there um, i have the grand rapid servos and they have a mounting kit 
that I didn't order because I was ordering the Kitfox kit. So I'm going to talk to them today and see if they have that um, cage that limits the, the throw. It doesn't limit it. It goes right to the edge of the full throw of the servo and then it doesn't allow further movement of the arm. So um, I'll talk to them and if they have one, I'll definitely get that to go on there. If not, I'll make my own. Um, it's not, you could even just put a, a stud in there that sticks out far enough so that the servo can't go past it. So absolutely, I will put a, a stop on that because if that ever went over center, that's uh, pretty catastrophic. So I also discovered that <laughs> trying to get in here and work on the servo, you know, you get these tabs sticking into your chest. It's really easy to spin the thing upside down. You can actually stand in there. You have great access to the servo. So this whole waiting for all that stuff to show up before doing the fabric was actually probably a waste of time. I could have got away with, with just spinning the fuselage upside down and working in there. So that will be addressed. Um, the other thing, let's see, you guys asked about was, oh, this one I really appreciate the comment because I didn't catch it. So when I purchased this, kit, the controls had already been put in to include the rudder cables and they've all been pre-swedged or already are connected. And one of you guys noticed that these protective sleeves that the cables run through are on the aft side of the mounts instead of the forward side. The purpose of these is to protect over the control tube where the cables go. So these are all put in backwards which is a real bummer because they're high salt in there. Um, so the only way I know of, and I'll, I'll look into it if there's a solvent or something I can use, but the best way to release high salt is with heat. And that's a plastic tube. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen to the tube when a heat's applied. Um, and since the cable's already been swedged, I can't remove the cables. So, that's a problem. Uh, thank you for pointing it out, um, but it has to be addressed and I kind of wish I'd done it before the fabric was on. So that's kind of a bummer. I'll have to deal with that. So um, appreciate those comments, you guys. It helps me make a better airplane. And so um, I'm never uh, not receptive to those types of comments. Um, there were more comments about the baggage, how I did the, you can't see it now because it's behind the fabric but how I did the baggage support. Um, there's a million ways to do anything. This is the way I chose to do it. Um, you guys, rec you know, a couple people said, why didn't you just do Velcro so you could Velcro over it? Why didn't you do a zipper? Um, you could totally do all those things. I had already pre-sewed the bag with a pocket because I had thought of this, this was the way I was gonna handle it so that I didn't have to get it all out and sew it, undo that stitch and redo it again. Um, this was the, my original plan, so that's why I went that way. Yeah, there's some other comments about why not use a carbon fiber, fiber arrow shaft instead of aluminum. Um, if you guys want to go weigh a carbon fiber arrow versus an aluminum, aluminum arrow, and if you think that difference matters, then by all means use carbon. Um, there's very little difference in weight between carbon and aluminum, especially on an arrow shaft. Um, it, I mean, it's painted black, you won't see it. Um, it was easier to remove the tip, or it was easy for me to remove the tip out of the car, out of the aluminum arrow. I don't know, because I haven't tried it, if it's easy to remove the tip, the threaded tips out of a carbon arrow. So um, yeah, if you want to use carbon, work just the same and it would be carbon. So um, all good suggestions, all different ways to do and accomplish the same thing. Uh, the other question I got was why put the antenna outside the airplane right here. Well, that's where the mounting plate was welded on the frame specifically for the antenna. Um, the suggestion was why not stick it in the tail? Well, very simply, the reason is that antenna that I got would be difficult to make work through these ribs in the tail. But the bigger reason is if you ever have an antenna failure, you now have fabric covering up your antenna that you're gonna have to rip off and completely redo your tail with paint, everything, just to change out your antenna. I don't see the advantage in that. And I have had to replace an antenna on my five before, so I'm certainly not gonna put it somewhere that I don't have access to it. That's that's just my opinion on that. Out here, you may have a little drag from it, whatever, you know, that's, that's fine. 
Um, you can easily change out the antenna if you need to. Um, the other thing that was uh, that I've done that I didn't record was some chafing tape. Um, you know, I was really kind of looking for places where this two huge rolls of chafing tape were necessary. Some people put them underneath everywhere the fabric touches. That's really not called for in the manual. The manual calls for it anywhere that there's going to be sharp edges or somewhere that can tear the fabric. So I put, put it underneath the um, servo mounting bracket where the rivets are because the rivets will contact the fabric. So it's chafing tape there. Um, there's a little bit of rough area underneath this tube. So I put chafing tape there. And under the cluster here, I was recommended because you're so close to the prop wash to, to, to put some there as well. So uh, I haven't really found a whole lot of places to use the anti chafing tape. So um, just remember if you place it on a spot, that spot cannot be glued to because you have the tape in the way. Um, yeah, you could definitely run tape everywhere, all over all the tubes, and you just add a bunch of weight to your airplane. So you're going to tape all that on the outside with the finishing tapes to get the second layer anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's my opinion on that. what's behind me it is a covered fuselage <laughs> oh man hitting the goals that I set for myself just don't doesn't ever happen this was supposed to be done like a week ago so um, the tail is on or the fabrics on the tail I walk you over there it is not heat treated yet because the glue is still a little bit wet so I'm gonna let it dry overnight and um, I'll go back over and heat treat the whole thing for the final temperature on the rest of the fabric. I do have to cut out the windows and wrap them and glue them. I'll do that tomorrow morning. And then uh, put on the poly brush. The other thing I worked on uh, all morning I didn't film is just working the, the uh, fabric in the door jam and getting it all laid in there real nice. Use a razor blade to cut it once it's glued in and get it out. Heat treated it again. I didn't film that. Um, and then Got the tail fabric on. So pretty uh, pretty good day. I was out here, oh, probably six hours today. So 
Um, it's slow, but it, it's I'm making progress. So tomorrow we'll get back after it, get the heat treat done, finish the windows, and get some paint on it. So uh, see you tomorrow. All right, good morning. So today we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, heat treatment on the vertical stabilizer and finish heat treating the fuselage. Go ahead and get the poly brush on. Um, and I also have to do the windows, so I'm gonna cut fabric here, wrap it into the frame and get that done. Alright guys, so the final heat treat has been done on the fabric, nice and tight, 350 degrees on all the surfaces. So it's time to bust out the poly brush, the mask, and a paintbrush, and start soaking this in with the poly brush to lock the fibers. Then we can start thinking about doing the tapes, which I think is pretty an ex pretty extensive project in itself. There has to be tapes run everywhere the fabric can contact a uh, a uh, piece of the frame underneath. So we'll get to that um, probably tomorrow, but for right now I'm gonna try to get a chance to uh, get all the poly brush on. I took a bunch of pictures of it because it's so pretty in the white with the white frame and the black accents. I wish I could leave it like this um, and not make it pink. I don't like the pink. <laughs> It's going to be pink and then silver and then the final colors, which I am looking forward to. But unfortunately, the inside will always be pink. So we're going to try to cover up all that with all the interior stuff and the baggage compartment. So um, anyway, just want to get one more shot of it. I'm going to do a walk around real quick of how it looked or how it looks um, on all the edges. I did do a little, already do it a, a, a pretty big piece over the handle. There's probably a better way to do that. Um, I just, when you cut the slit to get that on there, it just had a pretty big gap. So I went ahead and put that on and I'll put a doily on over the top of that. So there'll actually be three layers there to make that good and strong. Uh, it's all wrapped around the fairing opening. Um, for those that you don't know, a piece of aluminum covers this uh, where the horizontal stabilizer goes through that opening. Um, Tail came out really nice. I went ahead and put it back in the rotisserie, getting ready for the um, paint. So I got that back square tubing uh, bolted back in place. Fabric's done all behind it. Door jams came out real nice. And then the windows came out real good too. You can see the inside of the windows. The fabric is wrapped around, then the plexi will go in there. Um, there's been a couple of different methods of doing that, just using double-sided tape to hold that window in. I'll probably go ahead and with the traditional method of riveting in, just so if you fly with the doors open, you don't blow your windows out. So that's the sides. So I'll show you the bottom. So you can see we're all really clearly where all the tapes need to go. So there's gonna be tapes covering every one of these bars. So there's a lot of tapes to go on. And the order at which you do those tapes, uh, I'm sure there's some strategy to that as well. So that I'll be looking into next.
Powerful. I took the mask off for first time. All right, here we go. First coat of paint on the fuselage. No more pretty white. Bottom's done too. So we're gonna let it dry for a little bit. Uh, hopefully maybe get a second coat on today uh, so we're ready for those tapes. Uh, first coat's done. Hi, good morning. Uh, got the first coat of poly brush on the airplane. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down another couple coats along the tape seam line. So everywhere our tape needs to go, I'm gonna put down some brush, uh, poly brush on there and then let that dry, do a second coat and then get the tapes ready to go on. So hopefully uh, I got a, a long day ahead of me to get this done, but hopefully I get uh, most of the tapes on there by the end of the day. I love making these predictions on, to you on the video and then going back to edit and realize how fall, far short I fell on all those expectations for the day. So um, we'll see. I'll try to get these tapes done. I'm back at work again tomorrow, so uh, this is really my day to spend a lot of time on the plane. All right, so I got everything, uh, two coats of poly brush where all the tapes are gonna go. So I started cutting the tapes. What I'm doing, and it's uh, <clears throat> kind of copying the Kit Fox factory LSA as, as close as I can figure, is all the cross bars on here are gonna use one inch tape. Um, here at the carry through under the rib, or under the uh, strut bracket, two inch. I'm gonna do a two inch here. I'm not sure about this one, it's probably one, but I'm gonna do two inch on all my cross ones. So I'm gonna do two inch, two inch, two inch, two inch. Everything else is gonna be one on the bottom. And then on the side, you just do a one inch, that's upside down of course, to there. You're gonna do a two inch up the door frame. And then the laundrons and the stringer all get two inch. Um, while we're talking about tapes, what I should have done on the tail um, after thinking about it, is anywhere there's a really small contact point, like where this rib is, you don't need a two inch tape. There's just no reason for it. So I could get away with one inch on, on there, but I'd already done the tail with two inch. So to have just the vertical have one inch and everything else have two will look um, not symmetrical. So I am gonna go ahead and do two inch on that just to keep it consistent. But everything else where I can, where it's just a small uh, contact point, um, use as small a tape as you can to protect it, but you don't need the extra weight of adding, you know, big wide tapes when you don't need it. Um, 
So I'll set up the time lapse, kind of following along. I'm going to do the bottom first, work my way from the back to the front with all the cross pieces. And then all the long ones are the last ones to go on and go over the top of them. So I'll do the bottom uh, crisscross ones, then start working on the tail, and then uh, get it all ready for the wandron and the uh, stringer pieces to go in. So we're taping. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and call it for this episode. You guys can see the bottom's all taped. And I almost got this, all the tapes done on the whole thing. I still have to do both the lingerons, the stringer, and then around the windows and the door, both sides on the windows and the door. I got a piece up here and some of the uh, doublers need to be made for the little do doilies that need to go over some of the parts like the antenna mount and some of the mounts on the bottom. So um, probably got around three, four hours of, of that small stuff to do and I won't be able to get to it for a couple days and uh, my chance to edit is going to be tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you guys have any questions about what, what went on with the fuselage covering process, you know, we went from uh, the last video, this one we covered shrinking it, applying the poly brush, um, and then putting the tapes on. So uh, not a whole lot as far as 
as uh, descriptions go, it was just a whole lot of work. So it took a long time to do it. I'm real happy that I'm getting close to or seeing the end of the fabric portion of this build coming. So I have to cover the gear legs still, and then that should be, hopefully should, that should be it. And then we can start uh, focusing on the painting process. So you can look forward in the future to uh, episodes on the paint uh, setup, the paint booth, the equipment I'm going to use, and uh, then into the paint process. It'll probably be a couple episodes because I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, the other thing that's going on in the back workshop is the avionics are starting to come in. and Man, that's a big investment and it's really exciting to see the stuff <laughs> and a little intimidating to think about installing it. But um, I really think the system that I'm going with, you guys will really like as an option. It's really lightweight. Um, it's very functional. It has an autopilot. I think it really overall is going to be a really nice setup. I'm very excited about it. So we'll have a whole episode on, on avionics and the different options out there for that. And uh, just thanks for watching, guys. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers, so please hit the subscribe button. Help push me up to 10,000. I'd really appreciate that. That's been a goal for a long time for the channel is to hit 10,000 subscribers. So if you guys can help me get there on this video, all we need is like uh, maybe 800. So 800 subscribers out there. Subscribe, please. And then hit the uh, like button if you like it. Comment if you have a question. I'll get back to you if you guys make comments. I love reading those. And uh, hit the notification bell because uh, there's going to be some, some good episodes coming up uh, in the future with the paint booth and painting, the paint sprayer system, um, and then the avionics. And then there's still all the stuff of the engine still to come. So um, we may have more than six months of this still. We're trying to make it to... Oshkosh, I don't know if we can do it. If not that, we're trying to make it to Reno. If we can't make that, we'll try to make it to High Sierra Flying. And if we don't make that, I'll be pretty disappointed. So I'm working the best, I'm at the best pace I can. And I feel like I'm giving up tonight because I'm not going to finish the tapes. But I really do have to call tonight. And uh, I'll get back to it in a couple days. But thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode.